some video games. Come on. Come in the back of my game truck. I got the perfect thing. Near Automata is a third-person action game developed by Platinum Games, and if somehow you're one of the people who both know what those words mean, and yet you haven't played the game, you didn't know the, the things I just said, probably this video is completely worthless and you've already been convinced, right? The idea of a, of a company known for high-quality, high-octane character action games teaming up with Japanese girl enthusiast Yoko Taro. That's like, you've sold me. That's, that's, everybody who has ever heard that is like, yeah, that's, I'm, I'm gonna buy the game. Except for me. Uh, because I didn't know who Yoko Taro was. Uh, if you told me the guy with the Moon Man mask, I would have said like, oh yeah, I think I've heard of him. But I didn't know who he was. Never played any of his games. Never bought a no game station. D despite being called a no game station, it seems to have a lot of games that I seem to have missed out on. And uh, the only Platinum game I've played was uh, Infinite Space. <laughs> you know, one of those great character action games I hear so much about. So, so basically, my, my interest in Nier Automata, I had heard of it. I knew what it was. But, but the only reason I was interested in it at all was just public opinion. People said it was decent. Right? So, so that earned it a spot on my backlog just behind the Charles Barkley RPG and Speebot. And so I passed it by, right? Like a, like a cheap whore, not attractive enough to kidnap and live out my rape fantasies, but also not cute enough for me to rescue her from a life of crime and live out my single dad fantasies. It was just right in the middle of, I, I don't fucking care, you can go die on the street from crack. At least until a very kind man from Twitch, rest in peace, gifted me this game. And of course, I'm contractually obligated to play any game that someone gives me, no matter how garbage it is, and no, how much, how, no matter how much I want to kill myself after playing it. Ah! And it was supposed to be good, and I easily bend to the whims of public opinion, so... Why not? I tried it out, I gave it a shot. And so if somehow you've largely ignored the existence of this game outside of porn parodies, maybe I can, I can help give you an idea of what to expect. And, and maybe, maybe, convince you to buy this great fucking game. Yeah, I mean, okay. I, <laughs> spoiler, I like the game. I mean, if, if fuck you. If I want to start this review with the end, with my conclusion, uh, that's my, that's my fucking prerogative. Yeah. Sorry. Nier Automata, being a fast-paced third-person Platinum Games action game, of course starts with... Did I boot up the wrong fucking game? Near Automata starts with a shoot 'em up section, which is pretty cool, I guess. And then it turns into a fucking sick ass mech section, which is, you know, pretty pretty cool, I guess. It's it's a little strange to start off your third person melee fighting game with a, a top down shooting, uh, but what's stranger is that they keep fucking doing it. <laughs> is this this isn't a one off thing? This isn't just Yoko Taro saying gotcha. It's actually a bullet hell game. Gotcha! No, it's not. It's exactly what you expected. He keeps doing that. He really thinks that's a funny joke. I... Thanks. Thanks, Yoko Taro. Yoko Taro's target demographic here seems to be young men with attention attention deficit disorder. And being in that category, I, I, I guess I have to appreciate it. It's... 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 it's fun. <laughs> and then the, me the mech shoot breaks apart, and we're introduced to our main character, 2B, and her two beautiful thighs. If there's only one thing you know about Nier Automata, it's probably this. The character designs are pretty good. Oh my god, Becky, look at her butt. It is so big. <laughs> Which is kind of in line with this game's design philosophy of not fucking caring, of just not giving a shit, of doing unorthodox things, because fuck you. Uh, because this sort of modern take on character design, the, the trend that seems to be emerging is to make all the characters fatter, uglier, and more realistic. Uh, which I guess is just a, you know, people are getting fatter and uglier in real life. Yeah, okay. <laughs> sure. Uh, which is, which, which makes it kind of an interesting choice when Madman Yoko Taro says, why don't, why don't we just make them attractive? Why don't we just make the characters attractive? You have to appreciate the originality. Nobody's done that before. Did confuse some people, definitely. There were interviews where someone asked Yoko Taro, uh, you know, 2B's supposed to be a combat model android. 
Why is she wearing high heels? And, and you know, reasonable, reasonable confusion. Other than the fact that the, the answer should have been, you know why she's wearing high heels, right? It's not so she can run faster, okay? <laughs> You're not actually asking a question. You're just being an asshole. But Yoko Taro is a nice guy. He gave a legitimate answer. He said, the biggest reason is I just really like girls, which is clear. You play this game and you get that impression. He does clearly really like girls. He likes girls to such an extent that not only are most of the characters girls, overwhelming most of the characters are girls, the one major male character is also a girl. But we'll, you know, uh, set, set that aside for a second. What is this game, what is, what is this game about? Just a, the summary of it. Let, let, let me just, I don't want to talk about the story too much. Like I said, I think other people focus on that. It's not really my, my focus. But just a quick, a quick overview. The game's about a bunch of androids that look like humans, that were built by humans. The humans are hiding on the moon and they send out their moon android robots from the orbiting moon base to fight the aliens who have invaded the Earth with their machines. Machines are not the same as androids, probably. That's kind of a point of contention. You know, play the game. But that's, that's, the, that's the basic premise. Moon base androids fight alien machines. It's basic, you know what I mean? It's not anything, it's not too weird. Pretty, pretty basic shit. It gets a little more complex, you know? A little bit more is added. But I, like I said, that's not what I'm here to do. I'm not here to talk about that. So let's get back, you know, with the intro of this game. Let's get back to where we were. What happens next, right? You're you're sitting at the edge of your seat wondering what happens next in this game. It just did a third-person shooter. What the fuck is next? Next, it goes into the act the actual. It goes in the actual game. I mean, it. Now you you get your the meat. You get the the melee combat. And this is a platinum games melee combat. So you expect a high level of polish, and and you get that. You do. You do get a high level of polish. The game, it feels good. It feels really... That's the first thing you'll notice right away. Is that it is smooth. It is It is so smooth that I cannot put into words how smooth and fast and fluid it is. Like, I'd have to combine some metaphors to, to express this. Like, it's as smooth as butter on a baby's bottom. Something like... Something really creepy sounding like that is really the only way to express it. But it's... It's got some problems. I don't really know how to put this the best way, so I'm just going to go out and say it. Uh, the game is really good. The gameplay is very good. It has a lot of depth to it. But no one knows that. And I mean, this is a phenomenon that is not new to Nier Automata. I mean, this is something that happens a lot with shit games, kind of in, in, in the reverse example. Like, something like The Walking Dead, where a lot of really low IQ, non-discerning people really enjoyed it. And I don't, even though I'm blatantly insulting their intelligence, I, I, don't, I don't think that's a bad thing. I think the, the problem with The Walking Dead is if you play it and you don't pay attention... You might be led into thinking that your choices matter, and if your choices did matter, it's a significantly better game. I mean, just to choose your own adventure is an enjoyable enough time. It, that, that's basically what it is. There's nothing wrong with that. I like those. You know, who doesn't? But if you pay attention, you realize that it's all a trick, and you don't actually have any choice over anything you do. And once that sort of illusion is broken, the game becomes pretty shit. This is the same idea, but flipped on its head, where most people playing this game have the impression that it's pretty bare-bones combat. Fluid combat, right? Fun to, to play with combat, good dodging, good movement. I mean, fucking, it's, it just feels fun to move around in this game. That is an accomplishment in and of itself. But you talk about the actual combat itself, and most people are like, you know, I mean... Yeah, X button is light attack, Y button is heavy attack. You can switch weapons. Different weapons handle a little differently. That's about it, right? I mean, that's that's about you. You just button mash and you'll beat the entire game. And there, and there's not really any more depth to it. That's the impression that everybody gets. That's the impression I got. I was like, yeah, it's good combat, you know, as far as the feel of it, but it's not. It's nothing special, you know what I mean? I've heard a lot of things about Platinum Games combat. I expect a little more than this, right? Uh, 
I was dead fucking wrong. There's no other way to put it. Dead, dead wrong. And almost everyone I've heard of ever playing this game, reviewing it, is dead wrong. But it's not their fault. And that's the thing. That's, 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 that's the point of contention here. This is one of the major points that I really, re is really interesting, I think, about Nier Automata. Is that, so, so like, this is how this happened for me. I, you know, a lot of people, this didn't happen at all. But I had beaten the game. I played through the entire game on normal difficulty, right? Took me about 40-something hours. Did most of the side quests. There were a couple that I just didn't fucking care about, so I didn't do them. But, like, most of them I did. Played the game to completion. Beat it. And then I was doing research on the game to make this review. Right, I was trying to, trying to give you a good product. Just trying to make sure that you're getting something worth watching. Right, so I was doing a little bit of, you know, my impression might not be an objective sort of impression. So I was, I was, I was looking around at different, you know, gameplay footage and stuff like that. And I found this guy explaining the combos that he had developed with 9S. And now if you're unaware, there's a point in the game where you play as 9S, the little Shota boy, the sidekick to the, to the, the, the big, the big woman. Couldn't have come up with something better than that. Just big woman. That's, you're a, you're a mental genius, Michael. You're a, a, a wordsmith. <laughs> you, you eventually play as 9S. And everyone kind of fucking hates that part of the game. One, because it is the same as the first part of the game and you're forced to do it to get to the better shit later. And two, because... Uh, whereas when you're playing with 2B, you get the X button and the Y button, light and heavy attack. With 9S, you just get the X button, which really leaves the impression that you button, like, it makes the button mashing, it kind of lays it bare. It makes it pretty obvious that all you're doing is button mashing. They do add a little hacking thing, but that can get kind of boring. It's just another top-down shooter, <laughs> you know. We really don't need four different types of shooters in this third-person action game. Not including the fifth one, where you can just shoot in the normal game. But Yoko Taro had a hard-on for shooters. I don't know what to tell you. So, I actually want to create a 2D shooter, but oh. Square Enix is not allowing me to do that. And so this is where I'm letting it all <laughs> coming at you. Since our marketing team at Square Enix is not uh, giving me a good face, I'm gonna... Let's go back to talk about Nier. So this guy's doing these combos with 9S, and I saw the title of the video again, I was like, what fucking combos can you possibly do with 9S? He's got one button. Uh, I'm a fucking moron. That's all I've discovered from this, is that me and probably most of the people who play this game are morons for complaining about 9S having not enough depth. I don't know if you know this, and this is not just the case with 9S for all of these. But there, there is an amount of depth in the combat system that I just, I didn't know about. It's never discussed anywhere. Did you know you can switch weapons in the middle of a combo to change the combo? Did you know that 9S actually can use heavy attacks even though he's only got one button? Did you know that you can map the self-destruct button to a different key or a different button on your controller and then use the self-destruct button in the middle of combos to cancel combos, which will save your position in it, so you can use it a couple of times in a row to skip steps in a combo to build new, better combos. And when it gets to 9S, this is when it really gets fucking ridiculous, is because 9S, as everyone considers it to be the most shallow part of the game, gameplay-wise, the least fun to play, and in my opinion, he ends up being the most fun to play. Because his combos already, when you use them effectively, are meant more for a long-range attack. He's a scouting unit, right? He's not supposed to get in. The, his his gameplay is expressing who he is. It's it's uh, that already pretty good. But whereas just like 2B, he can offset his attacks. That's what it's called when you do the little when you do the little self-destruct thing to to delay the the moves, the chain of the combo, so that you can get the later parts of the combo and build new combos. He can offset with the self-destruct just like 2B can. But 9S can also offset with a dodge, which means he can use a dodge, use a, an evade, to build new combos, which makes his evades, his, his combos that you can build with this, the advanced techniques you can use, not only are they more long-ranged, they're also faster. 
they're also built around using these attacks while dodging. And it makes sense. It, like, when it comes together, it feels like you're a fucking genius. Or like the guy who made this game is a fucking genius. The people who made this game, fucking geniuses. Because you start to feel like a scouting robot. You're dodging all around. You're trying not to get hit. You're doing little quick little long distance moves. And it's... It's, it's, it's ridiculous how much work was put into 9S. And no one realizes it. And it's just basic things. I'm not even good at it. During a lot of this, I'm showing this other guy's footage. Because I'm, I'm still fucking figuring it out. And this guy's a master. I really recommend you check out this guy's channel. Morning Lord 22 just these fucking near automata videos are some of the most interesting things I've ever seen in my life because I had no idea any of this was in the game. But like, just understanding the fact that you can use a self-destruct and in the case of 9S, a dodge to offset your combos, it, it, it fucking changes the entire game. You're playing a completely different game at this point. And I mean, did, did you know any of that? Did you have any idea any of this was in the game? Of course you fucking didn't. The game, <laughs> for one, the game never tells you that. But that's not necessarily a problem in itself, right? Just because the game doesn't tell you something, that's fine. I mean, it just means they expect you to figure it out on your own. That's that's perfectly acceptable. That's how a lot of games do it. And it's, it's kind of more fulfilling when you finally figure it out. The problem is, I beat the entire game and I never figured that out. And now you might just say, well, Michael, you're just an idiot. And you might be right. Probably are. But I don't think anyone else figured this shit out either. I didn't hear any. I mean, maybe it's a little biased. The people who talk about this game are like journalists who play on easy mode sort of shit. It could be a little bit of skew there. But even on fucking 8chan and shit, I'm not seeing anybody talk about how this combat actually has depth. I just hear about them complaining that the combat was a little bare bones. And 9S sucked dick because he's got one button. It's just... And, and again, it's not their fault, it's really the game's fault, because you can play through the entire game on normal difficulty, which, you know, you would assume is the standard difficulty, that's what they tell you, that that's the difficulty you will have the most fun on, that's the difficulty the game is meant to be play at, played at, you would assume. Uh, but on normal difficulty, you never, ever need any of these advanced techniques. And I can say that 100%, because I beat the whole fucking game without knowing any of this. None of it. I had no idea. I didn't even know you could switch weapons in the middle of combat. That's probably, if anyone figures out any of these in normal play, it's probably that one, that you can switch weapons in the middle of a combo. I didn't know that. And the rest of them, there's no fucking way I would have figured out because you don't need it. If they don't tell you about this, these advanced techniques and you don't actually need them to beat the game, the majority of players are never going to use them or even know about their existence. And so you're left with a combat system. It's, it's really weird. You're left with a combat system that is objectively deep, that has a lot in it. And I would say is a very fun, like I, once I started messing around with this, it's really fun to play around with these advanced techniques, but you never do. No one ever does it and you never need to. So, okay, right, I mean, there's an obvious solution here. There, there's like, well, duh, uh, you're playing on normal. Play on hard, right? Just play on hard. Obviously, you were. I, this must just be one of those games where you're meant to play on a harder difficulty. Maybe that should be a little bit more public knowledge so that people don't have to play through the entire fucking game one time first before realizing that they played it wrong. <laughs> but... That's a, that's a simple solution. Okay, let's start up on hard. Let's see what happens. Which brings me to gripe number two. Why the fuck is the prologue unskippable? I mean, okay, I died, right? That's on me. That's obviously I'm the next reincarnation of Hitler because of that. But could you, you have to waste 20 minutes of my time every time I die just because I'm trying to figure out the intricacies of your combat system, all right? Like, this is the beginning of the fucking game. I'm just trying to figure out how to do these combos that are never explained anywhere and I have no reason to do. Could you not restart me every time I die? Which, speaking of which, uh, basically everything kills you in one hit, especially the boss. It's a little, sh it's a little shitty. 
uh, it, it gets to the point where instead of actually using these intense combos, these interesting moves, these little new move sets that are pretty fun to play around with, I just wanted to beat the fucking prologue, so I just used my gun and cheesed through it. Which is another problem. You can just use the gun and cheese through it, which means the combos are still not really necessary, except for, you know, later on, there's an occasional boss, there's some, there's some stuff that, there's some, some enemies that legitimately you cannot just use the gun against, but a lot of them you can. <laughs> but, okay. Uh, at this point, you know, af after you beat the prologue, which can be fucking hell, but once you get past there, once you get to a point where you can save, things do get better. The combos are useful, and I had a lot of fun messing around with the combos. I had a lot of fun building new moves. It's it's an entire layer of the game that I didn't know existed, and I already really liked this game. I already really liked the combat, just for the, the fluidity of it. But this is like a completely new game. Like, just, and it's not that much. It's not like I'm trying to, it's, the game isn't, it's not to the point where you have to really dissect it or anything. But, you know, I, I'm figuring out little combos, you know, figuring out different moves that, you know, what's my standard move that works against, like, big groups of enemies? What are some ways I can juggle if I'm fighting with, like, just one enemy? And I'm just experimenting. It's a lot of fun, right? And, and it's actually got, like, a natural progression to where you're kind of, like, experimenting and fucking around with 2B. And in the moment you get, like, really good at that and you're starting to, you know, you're showing your prowess then it's kind of over, and then you play as 9S, and you kind of have to do it again. And it's it's actually really good. It's, it's really fun. But there's a problem there, and that's that I, I can't actually say for sure if it's necessary. I want to say it is. There seems to be a lot of points where, like, especially my go-to dealing with a lot of enemies at once moves would be pretty hard to... To, it'd be pretty hard to do those situations if I hadn't figured out those moves on hard because a lot of things do kill you in one hit or if not two hits two hits is usually the best you can get if an enemy kills you in two hits yeah, that's a weak that's a weak fucking enemy but the thing is I don't know if it's actually necessary or if I've just seen the matrix and you know you've just handed me a hammer and everything looks like nails now I don't know if that's what's going on or if I just saw a bunch of nails and I had to go find a hammer, you know, I, it's hard to say. I've broken the simulation, so I can't give necessarily an objective opinion on whether it is actually necessary that you use these moves. I mean, I'm sure it's not in the case of you could just dodge very well, but it would, it would be harder, I think. But it, there's still a bit of a problem here, and that's that... If you play the game on normal, because you won't play the game on easy, you're not a baby, you're not a journalist. You, you know, you'd play the, uh, the lowest difficulty you'd go to is on normal, and that's a, per that's a perfectly respectable difficulty in basically any game. But if you play it on normal, it's so easy, you will never use these techniques. Right? You'll, still, you'll need to get good at timing, you'll need to get good at dodging, it's not a pushover game, you'll have a little bit of trouble, you'll die occasionally, but you won't need these advanced techniques, you will not get to the point where you'll ever discover them. On the other hand, if you play on hard, you'll die to one hit on basically everything, especially if you don't equip any plug-in chips that give you more health and defense, which, if you're not aware, plug-in chips are the equivalent of equipment in this game. And especially bosses. Even if you equip a bunch of plug-in chips, bosses will still usually kill you in one hit. Two if you're lucky. Two is a sweet spot, but two is a fucking hard sweet spot to hit. And so it's still a problem where, like, there should be a difficult... There should be, like, a normal plus or a rough mode or something. And, like, there's a good combat system here. Like, when it was good, it was... It was beautiful. Like, I really had a lot of fun with it on my second playthrough when it worked. But other times, I'm dying in one hit to this fucking boss, and I'm trying to experiment, right? I'm trying to experiment and find out what set of moves are going to work best against this boss, but I die in one fucking hit, which makes it really, really frustrating to try and experiment. Where most of the time, you just want to take the easy way out, the slow and less fun way out of just shooting the thing, at least whenever you can. And it's, it's, it's kind of like Yoko Taro doesn't fucking care. 
and I think this this sentiment, I think this sentiment, is uh, is seen a lot in different parts of the game. I think we'll get to that. I think that's that's something we'll probably we'll probably cover here. Uh, but he just doesn't care. He doesn't care if you don't, if you don't, if you, he doesn't care that you die in one hit, right? That's on you. Figure it out, right? I mean, he doesn't, he doesn't care that, that you have to play the entire fucking prologue anytime you die, right? But I care, okay? Yoko Taro, you know, he wants the game a certain way. He doesn't care if you like it or not, which is commendable in a way. I care though. I like you. You're a cool guy. We should hang out more. I, I want you to have a good time. So this is my recommendation, right? If you're playing this game, I'm going to do my best to make sure that you have a good time. This is my recommendation to get the most fun out of it. This is assuming you actually want to use these advanced techniques, that you're not garbage at video games. You can at least, you want to get better at the very least. Uh, this is what I recommend. Play the prologue on normal, okay? Put your pride aside. Fuck the fact that you can't save anywhere in this long-ass prologue. Play it on normal, and then as soon as you can save, switch the difficulty to hard. And then after that, you still have the problem where most shit is going to kill you in one hit, but you can save, so it's not as bad. It might, you know, it's, it's sort of an old... NES style game where you got it. Yeah, you got to redo parts of it. Maybe a long stretch when you die It's not too bad since you can save it's not NES style. You can't save in those fucking You know what I'm getting at. It's an older sort of you can probably get you it, it won't be as frustrating And then just seek out defense chips and health upgrades like with a vengeance like you need these these are your lifeblood the more of these you find the better the game will be unless you just are intent on never getting hit ever which is kind of hard to do when you're experimenting with the combat system. Uh, but, that's what I recommend. And if you do the side quests, there's one pretty early on where you can tell some cutie android girl that her mentor was a dickbag and she'll give you a sweet defense chip. That'll help a lot. Uh, it, I think it's a melee defense chip, like fucking plus six or something. All you gotta do is when you do that quest, make sure you tell her that her mentor was an asshole. And then you'll get the chip. I don't know what happens if you don't tell her that she, that her mentor is an asshole, because I'm an asshole and I always tell her. But I know if you tell her, you get the chip. So you might have to put some morality aside if you think that's a bad thing to do. But I think that's a good thing to do, so it works out for me. That's what I recommend. If you do that, it should work out all right. That's I hope. <laughs> It'll still be a little hard. There'll still be parts where bosses will kill you in one hit, but you can work with it. Right, and you, I think you'll have a much more enjoyable time. I had a much more enjoyable time the second time through, and that's with already liking the game the first time. This is what I recommend. In fact, I almost want to timestamp this, make this a video its own, just that paragraph about how to enjoy this game. I, I want someone out there, like, I, I hope this video, I don't want this, I don't care if this video gets big or whatever, but I hope that part gets big so that people can, can figure out how to play the fucking game Right? Because no, it, it, they don't tell you. Yoko Taro doesn't care. But I want people to enjoy this game. Because I really like it. Spoilers, again, there's my conclusion. I really like it. But no one knows that there's more to it. So just like, if, if, if you could like spread this part around, I did it. Bless you. Uh, anyway, the game continues. Back into our, <laughs> our progression of the game. Right? The <laughs> it continues, right? As games tend to do. Uh, you kill a big boss robot, you kill yourself, and you resurrect on the moon. Which, it sounds, that sounds like a strange set of events, but honestly, this game goes some, some weird places. Uh, it's very good. I, I'm, again, I'm not gonna go too much into the story, because I think, I just don't want to spoil it. And other people talk about it a ton. It's the only thing anyone ever fucking talks about with this game. So, I'm not here to talk about that. Footnotes, it's an interesting story. The characters are very fun. That's the best part, honestly. The little twists and turns, yeah, they're, they're neat. But the characters are, are a joy to be around. Uh, anyway. This is now probably the point where most people, me at least, are introduced to the fact that this game has multiple endings. If you didn't know that coming into the game, uh, this game has multiple endings. You may have gotten the one where you die during the prologue, but that doesn't even really seem like an ending. It's just like, you fucked up. Uh... So, there's that one. But then you get into the moon base, and they tell you how to do the self-destruct feature, and because you have a functioning brain and a sense of humor, 
you, you immediately self-destruct and doom humanity by blowing it all up. Uh, which is fun. You know, curiosity killed the cat, sure, but uh, satisfaction brought it back. And it, it, it's this this is where that idea is introduced. I'll probably have more to say about the endings later, but for now, just just they have been introduced. The game has introduced them. They exist. Uh, and they have also exist. They have also mentioned the fact now in the game that most of the endings are jokes, which is something that you may not have known going in. Like I knew there were multiple endings. Basically, I didn't know, I, and I heard that there were a lot of them. This is where I first became aware of the fact that, like, oh, like most of them are jokes and not really real endings. Okay, <laughs> fine, that's fine. Also, the other ones that aren't jokes are not necessarily endings, only like, that's not important. They're more like chapters, really, but okay. Uh, our heroes get sent to Earth by a commander, which, uh, by the way, even by the loosest of standards, is asking for it. And then we get into another shoot 'em up section because oh, that's a funny joke. Let's keep doing that one. And then we find we finally land on Earth, where we'll be spending most of our time. And Near Automata takes place in an open world. That's kind of a vague statement. It's not really all that true. I mean, it, it's definitely true. But when you say open world, you probably think something like Morrowind or GTA, or maybe Skyrim if you've got like no taste. But but yeah, that's probably what you think of. Really, this is more of a Legend of Zelda style, like pre-Breath of the Wild. I never played Breath of the Wild. I don't have a, I don't have a Bing Bing Wahoo machine. I don't know, I don't know what Breath of the Wild is like. It sounds like it's got more of an open world, but I'm talking like Ocarina of Time or something. Classic Zelda sort of open world, where it's really more like different areas that are distinct from each other that are connected by like little tunnels, <laughs> basically, with maybe a few little secret paths and stuff like that, but but it's really a bunch of distinct areas that are all connected, and you can go between it basically any time. But it's not like an open world like you would really ex think of when you hear that term. It's not a knock on the game. I'm, I'm just clarifying because I don't want anyone getting the wrong idea here. This is not Skyrim 2. This is near 2 really apparently does not have anything to do with Nier, but bear, bear with me, I'm, tr I'm, tr I'm just trying to explain things here. <laughs> and like this, it really, it's not a knock on the game. The environments look, look good. They're, they're quite good. They, they look gorgeous a lot of times. And it's got a variety to it. The world has a lot of character to it. It's got some areas that are really nicely rendered, really nicely put together. I mean, it's got some standards, you know, a desert world forest world. <laughs> it's like Mario, you know, it's got the forest, the desert, and stuff like that, but it's also got, like, an amusement park and shit like that. It's, it's fun. You know, it's, it's fun. Uh, there are problems. If you, if you look closely, uh, you'll, you'll start, you'll start noticing seams, and once you noticed one seam, you'll start seeing more seams, and sooner or later, the whole simulation of life starts to fall apart, and the life you thought you were living is revealed to be nothing more than a meaningless construct of some higher unknown being, and the, it, you, you realize that you're just a piece of code inside of, inside of a bigger program. Uh, I would recommend not looking too closely. Ignoring existential crises, uh, for, for now. You make your way to the resistance camp that you were sent to by the bandage bum, and... I got some sweet ass fucking tunes, my Negro. For me, uh, this was the first time getting into this area. This is the first time that I really sat back and listened to the music. Because before this, there's so much going on, trying to learn the mechanics and the story and the characters, trying to make stupid jokes to appease the angry autists who watch my stream. The music was just in the background, right? I wasn't really paying attention to it. But now it stands out, and I, I almost, I want to believe that this is on purpose, and it probably is to a degree. The fact that you have this kind of high energy start, and then things kind of calm down, and you get this really nice music, you just walk around talking to people for a little bit. I, they definitely did that to manage, you know, energy levels, but I'd like to believe they also did that to, to draw some attention to the music. And it works, I, maybe they didn't mean to do it, but it, it works. And it stands out. Like, the moment you hear this music, the whole game, I found myself with, like, a, a big fucking dumb grin on my face because of most of these tracks. It is definitely the strongest point of this game. Uh, to, to some extent, because it's accessible. 
Like, the combat is, is good. It might even be better than the music, but the combat, you gotta fucking find it. And unlike what, you know, the Melon Man tells you, you don't need to watch YouTube videos to understand good tunes. You just get it. And so, this, this, this soundtrack is... I, 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 I'm playing a little bit of it as this video goes on. I'm, I'm sure I probably made the decision to have it playing through, like, this entire video. So if you're liking the tunes going on, it's this game. It's, it's a soundtrack that I listen to still, outside of the game, just on its own. And I'm not the kind of guy who usually does that. I like real music. Video game music is good and fine, but, like, you listen to it in the context of video games. This is like just a, a work of art. I listen to the soundtrack on its own. And I think I, that's the best praise I can get give it. And luckily it's one part of the game where I don't really need to give it much praise because you, you're, you're hearing it right now. You can go look at, you, you know, you don't have to buy the game to listen to the music. I recommend, even if you don't play the game, you should listen to the music. I recommend the game too, obviously. But what I'm getting at, very strong, very nice. Now, We've kind of gone over most of the major points, you know, the gameplay, the music, the setting, uh, the story, like I said, not really going into, just would like to, just would like to say it's charming. The characters are very charming. They, they focus a lot on the character interaction and the different, the, the, just, just the interaction. You pick any two characters. There aren't many characters in this game, so it's not like that's like a, a, a crazy thing to say. But you pick two major characters, you see the interactions between them. It's just fun. Right? Seeing shy little 9S try and win over 2B, it's, oh, it's beautiful. Oh, it's so nice. I just made a little ding that's going to ruin the recording. I'm not, not going to retake this. I'm not going to do another take. This is... It's great. I love it. 9S, all the characters grew on me by the end of it to where I, they're, just, they're just beautiful people. I love them. 9S especially is the best boy. Best girl too. I, it's hard to tell the difference sometimes with this guy. It's so good. Other than that, there's, uh, there's, there's just a few other things I'd like to mention. This video's getting long. <laughs> like, really fucking long. So let me just... There's a few other things. Another gripe or two. And a few little compliments I'd like to, I'd like to point out. Uh, the gripe... Is that the game makes you play the entire first ending. It's, it's... The endings, other than the joke ones, aren't really endings. I don't want to spoil anything, but like, most of them are just chapters. So I'll just phrase it like that. The game makes you play the entire first chapter, probably like nine or eight hours long. They make you play it, maybe more, actually. They make you play it again, a second time, as 9S. The exact same thing, just with slightly different combat, which, if you're not a moron, you're not some sort of mongoloid like I was, you, you'll figure out that his combat actually has a lot of depth, and it's pretty fun. It actually plays a lot differently than 2B. But most people didn't figure that out. I didn't figure that out. That does help. Once you know that that's the case, it actually does make 9S's section a lot better. So you're going to be going into this with a better experience than most people who played this game. But as far as the story, the different story beats it goes through, it's basically the exact same. Uh, it's, it's, it's identical, right? It's the same. It's a retread with little tiny changes. And you have to play it to get to ending C, D, E, blah, 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 you know, uh, to get to the ending of the game, the final chapter, you have to play this to do it. And the final chapters introduce, like, new shit, right? Like, actual fun, new shit, new characters, just good stuff, you know? The ending of the fucking game that you want, you want to get to the ending. So you have to play ending B, the, you know, the second part. Which is another mo just dick move from Yoko Taro. He clearly does not care though. And I, there's the, the only like I have to admire it. And like I said before, I have to admire how little he fucking cares what you think about his fucking masterpiece. But it's a little mean, Yoko Taro. It's a little mean to make me play that again. But okay. Uh, other than that, the game has a lot of little touches. You know, on the positive side, it has a little nice little touches that really add to the feeling that. This game was made with care, and I'm not, you know, uh, <laughs> ignoring the fucking repeating landscapes, right? You gotta, you gotta look at a bigger picture. <laughs> Games are expensive, okay? Uh, and the thing is, like, a lot of these things people won't even see. I mean, well, a lot of people won't see the repeating shit either, but I, I did uh, the second time through anyway. But there are little, little things that 
I'm not even talking about like the, the the super secret boss or the the little mechanical niceties, like the fact that there's not a stamina system in the game. Probably most people won't even notice that, but you but just think about it. You think about something like Breath of the Wild. Like I said, I don't know mo don't know much about it. But I know it's got a stamina system, and most of those stamina systems are garbage. The fact that it it limits how much you can run around, it it just really kills the pace of the game. Your Automata doesn't do that. They know that moving around in this game is actually fun, so they let you do it all the time. Run all you want. You never get tired, which makes sense. You're a bunch of androids, but it also just makes sense. Like, that's what the fucking game should do. I don't need to be playing Legend of Zelda and word like, how's this? How is Link running? So, shouldn't he get tired? Who fucking cares? <laughs> just let me run. Anyway, I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about little things like that. I'm talking about something that... This is a little bit of vague spoilers. In a second, I'll have some real spoilers, but this is sort of vague spoilers. So, let you know, warning, here's the time code, I guess, if you want, or whatever. But I might not even put a time code here. I might just be lazy. But just, there are some very vague spoilers I'm about to get into. You can't even really call them spoilers because of how vague it is. Like, Like, I'll give you an example before I give you the real thing so you can determine for yourself. But this is sort of like... If I was talking about, like, Game of Thrones or something, and I said, Somebody died, and they died in this way, and this happened. But it was just as that vague, okay? So, you've been warned, alright? Uh, there's, there's a point in the game where someone suffers a great loss, and because of that, the character asks you to make a decision, okay? And they ask you to either kill them, and just, you know, end their suffering, or... Wipe their memory so they don't have to remember the terrible things that happened. Like, wipe their memory completely. Like, they don't even know who they are, basically. Uh, and, and the game presents this. You have to do one of these two things. You have to make this decision. This is one of those classic video games. You got an A and a B, right? You have, a, you have two choices. That's it. You have to make one. That's what, you know, that's what you would expect, at least, in any video game. Not in Nier Automata. Your Automata, you can just leave. The game never tells you that, ever. But for a lot of assholes like me, that's the most natural choice, right? In most games, they would rob you of your agency. They would force you to choose between two options that if you're anything like me, you would never take. But this game doesn't. You can just leave. And that's, that's beautiful. That really, like, it is... The fact they, they don't tell you, and most people will never even, they'll just assume that it's like any other game, and that you can't do it. And I think that uh, that applies to a lot of this game. With a combat, your button match, you know, your button matching through most of the game, you just assume that it's going to be like any other game, and that that's the extent of the combat, and it's not too bad. It isn't. But they don't tell you. <laughs> and I could keep going with this sort of little shit that they did right for the, for the rest of fucking time. So to keep, you know, I'd like to put this video out this month. So I'm, I'm, I'm gonna start to wrap it up here. But uh, another point I want to make, I want to really bring home is that Yoko Taro really does not fucking care about you. And I think we've mentioned some points about that already. Some examples, you know, the fact, the, oh, the controversial sexy designs. This is the thing I'm talking about right here. I've told you guys this before. Absolute perfection. No ifs, ands, or buts. This right here is absolute perfection. Which obviously I do not disagree with. Making you replay the prologue whenever you die. Making you play the entire second chapter no matter what. I didn't even mention the fact that this game starts by telling you if you want to save, you have to figure it out yourself. Which again, that one's fine. <laughs> you got no complaints from me with that one. But the best example of this is, unfortunately, like a legitimate spoiler. So, if you haven't played this game, skip to this timestamp. Uh, I'll be back with like a tiny, tiny little conclusion after this. Now that those faggots are gone, I, I have to assume that the only people left are the real gamers. So, here we go. As you may remember, because you've clearly played the game, you're, you're top tier, right? You're just looking at this for a review, a different perspective. As you may remember, this game ends with a very fucking hard bullet hell section, where you fight such menacing opponents as the marketing division, 
And this section, as you probably remember, is so hard that the game gives you the option to borrow strength from other players, because otherwise anyone who isn't a, a Toho pro will be trying this for hours, and, and probably never beating it, really. And then afterwards, you discover that all the players that helped you during that battle were other real people who deleted their save data in order to help you see the ending. And, you know, you kind of get a sense of gratitude from that. And, and, and like, I, I, it, you're then given the option to delete your save data in order to help other people see the ending of the game. And at this point, I was really liked the game, and I was like, yeah, why, yeah, I'll get rid of my save data, I'll do the selfless thing, right? Who wouldn't? I'm not some sort of dick bag. I'll, 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 I'll delete my save data to help other people, right? And it's, it's like really a neat ending, because it gives it like this sense of finality. It's over. The story is over. You can't just go back in and replay little missions that you liked. You can do that if you don't delete your save, like some sort of fucking asshole who didn't understand the whole point of the game. The, the, this ending, like, makes it, it, it completes the entire package. You, you, if you didn't delete your endings, you're a bad person. But, you know, if you don't, then yeah, you get the chapter select. You can go through little things. But if you do the, the real thing and you delete your saves, you don't get to do that. You gotta live with it. The game is over. I love it. And then they released a DLC. Months after the original release. Long after most people had already beaten the game and deleted their saves. They, do, they released a new DLC. And you could only play the DLC if you had beaten the first few endings. Oh! You spent your hard-earned cash to play some DLC? Sorry, you deleted your save. Guess you'll have to play it all again. Yoko Taro, you are a beautiful asshole. Welcome back. People who haven't played this game, welcome back to the conclusion. It's a pretty short one. My basic conclusion is that you should play this game if you haven't. Uh, this is one of the first videos I've done where there isn't some sort of giant gag running through the whole thing. I don't have some sort of wacky ending in mind. I, I originally had an idea to show how shitty making players play through ending B was by making two versions of this video, most of which was exactly the same, but the ending was only available in the second version of that video. I, maybe I'll still do that, because it's kind of funny, but uh, it's, it's, it's a little dumb. It's a, it's a little stupid, too. Uh, anyway... Near Tom does great. I mean, the story is endearing. The combat, when you dig in a bit, contains a lot of depth. The music is an absolute joy. And it's clearly made with a lot of love. Even if that love is not always directed to the player. Uh, it's, it's probably my favorite game to come out in recent memory. And has now taken its place up there with Paper Mario, The Thousand Year Dick. Hey, if you stuck around this long, thank you. Uh, I appreciate it. I, I want to be putting out more of these kind of videos. Uh, and I appreciate any of the dozens <laughs> of people who watch these, as opposed to the hundreds that watch me s sit in front of a computer and play video games. It's kind of funny, but it's only it's, I have no one but myself to blame. It's completely my fault because I don't put these things out fucking ever. And when I do, everybody gets mad at me because I, I, I make them pretty edgy. Uh, I want to try something different this time. Not that this one isn't edgy, but... Well, I don't know. Maybe it's not. You know, actually, I don't think it is. There's no 9/11 jokes in that one. That's kind of this. There's it's kind of a new. That's kind of a new for me. Usually, I have at least one 9/11 joke in every single one. I guess. I guess I'll have to. Huh, I'll have to live with that reality that there's a video of mine that doesn't have a 9/11 joke in it. it. Did have a couple, you know, dick joke in it though, so it's good enough. Uh, no Holocaust joke either. What am I coming to? Anyway, thanks for sticking around. Uh, this video is a little different than the other stuff I've done, but I'm still trying to I'm still trying to find myself. You know what I mean? I'm trying to figure out what exactly I want to do with this whole edited sort of reviews and shit like that. Do I want it to be super jokey? Do I want it to be more analytical? Do I want a combination? Do I want some that are one way and some that are another way? I don't know. Probably that last one. It's probably that last one. But tell me, let me know what you think. What do you, you know, if you sat through all of this. Anyway, uh... You can fucking subscribe if you want to, faggot, I suppose. 
if you feel like it. I'm not asking or anything, but if you if you want to, more of this shit will be coming out eventually. I'd like to say it's going to happen, you know, this year, but uh, whenever I promise that, it, it ends up not happening. So I'll just say that I hope it, that more of this comes out soon. I'm hoping that it'll come out every couple weeks or so, at least. Uh, but I, I'm not going to promise anything, because promises always get broken. <laughs> If I don't make the promise, I'll be able to live by the promise, you know what I'm saying? Uh, and also, yeah, I, I streamed the entirety of this game. So if you're somehow unaware of the fact that I do that, you're one of the few people who doesn't watch that shit but does watch this, you're you're the best. Um, if you want to watch some of that shit, I got banned off Twitch, so I'm streaming on YouTube for now. <laughs> there, I'll put a link in the description or something if you want to hang out. Otherwise, thanks for watching. It means a lot.